So, yeah, I thought I'd speak to you today about large object heap compaction, which is a new feature that Microsoft's just added to the .NET framework in version 4.5.1, which was released last week. So I'll begin with a bit of an introduction to large object heap fragmentation. Sorry if you already know about it, but it's best we all start in the same place. So the important thing to know about memory in .NET is that the heap isn't actually a single place in memory. It is in fact divided into four separate chunks. And the reason for this is to improve performance because it allows the uh, CLR to garbage collect certain parts of it at a time rather than having to do the entire thing every single collection. So these three heaps on the left here are known as the small object heaps. And these are where all objects below 85,000 bytes are allocated. And then we also have the large object heap, which is where large objects, so over 85,000 bytes, are allocated. <coughs> so suppose our application's been running a bit and our heaps have filled up with a whole bunch of stuff. And then some of this stuff falls out of scope or is disposed, so it's garbage collected. This leaves us with a whole bunch of holes in the memory, a load of gaps. And for the three small object heaps, a process known as compaction happens, whereby the objects are shuffled up against one another to fill these holes. However, the large object heap doesn't do this, the reason being that Microsoft <coughs> deem it too performance intensive to do this on every um, time it's collected. So those gaps just remain which means that over time your application can get in, the large object heap can get into a fragmented state. Um, a typical way this might happen is something like this, where you get a large object loaded into memory. So this could be something like a, a log file, for example. Then something else is loaded after it. Then subsequently the first object is uh, disposed. But then, suppose in the meanwhile, a couple more things have been written to that log file, and it's loaded back into memory again, but slightly bigger than it was before. It now can't fit in the space it was, so it has to be allocated at the end of the heap. And this may mean that it overruns the end of the heap, which means that the heap will have to expand to accommodate it. And this process can happen repeatedly, and the heap will keep expanding. And eventually what will happen is your large object heap will take up all the RAM in your computer and it will eventually crash with an out of memory exception. So this can be a particularly difficult problem to deal with as a developer because it's very hard to figure out exactly which objects are causing this problem because .NET abstracts away the concept of physical memory unless you do fancy things like writing unsafe code or pinning objects. And also these problems often take a long time to actually manifest, so it can be a really tedious thing to have to debug. So your strategies up till now for dealing with this, um, in rough order of goodness, are break down large objects into smaller ones and write some kind of functionally equivalent wrapper class. Or you can reduce large object churn, or ideally eliminate it completely. Or the least elegant solution is you can periodically restart your application, which is what IIS does when you recycle apples, essentially. However, now in .NET 4.5.1, there's another option, whereby you can tell the garbage collector that next time it collects the large object heap, it should do a compaction. Uh, it's just a one-off, so after this compaction's happened, your application will keep going as it did before. Um, and to do this, you simply put in that first line there. Ooh, press the wrong button. Um, and if you want to do the collection immediately, then you can put in this line as well. Um, this is some fairly cryptic advice that Microsoft give about when you should use it, which basically boils down to don't use it willy-nilly because it's quite expensive and it will cause your application to freeze for a period of time while it's doing the compaction. So, of course, that's kind of academic if you don't actually know how long this pause is going to be. So I did a bit of an investigation into it. And essentially, it turns out, unsurprisingly, I guess, that the length of time for the compaction is linearly proportional to the amount of stuff that you have to move. So 
yeah, I wrote a test app which allocates a whole bunch of objects, large objects, and then um, deallocates around half of them <coughs> randomly, leaving it in a fragmented state. Then it does a compaction, and by time how long it takes for the compaction to happen. And it turns out it's about 2.3 milliseconds per megabyte on my dev machine. So you can find out how much data will be moved, and therefore from that the length of the compaction. Um, because essentially everything on the large object heap mostly is going to be moved, because everything after the first gap will have to be shifted down, and there are likely to be lots of gaps. Uh, you can figure out how much stuff is on your large object heap by you can either use Redgate's own Ants Memory Profiler or you can use WinDBG, the SOS extension, the uh, heap stack command will tell you it. Um, and also, because of the fact that it's moving essentially everything on the large object heap every time you compact it, it means that doing a compaction doesn't make subsequent compactions any quicker. So you should leave it as late as possible to do the compaction if you have to do it at all. So, yeah, in conclusion, I'd say it's sensible to use it if you can't do the other options because you don't have time or it may just not be possible for your application. You obviously need to be targeting .NET 4.5.1 or be able to upgrade it to do so. And you have to accept that your application will occasionally pause while these compactions happen. So if that's going to affect the usability, like if, if it was a game, for instance, you wouldn't want to be doing that. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, presuming it pauses the whole process, so it's not just one thread within your application, it's the entire It's the entire thing, thing yeah. So you presume that you could get around having more large object management stuff in a separate process and then have cross communication perhaps to get around that? I suppose you could, yeah. I haven't really looked into that. Uh, Jason? Just to clarify, it when you do, when you, when you set it to use it, does that apply for the rest of the application just for the next garbage collection and then it resets it? Just for the next garbage collection of the large object heap. And then it resets it automatically? Yeah, that. okay. that's right. How, how would we be likely to create large objects? I mean, is it mostly set string if we read a large text file? Um, yeah, large strings, large arrays would be the typical ways that you do it. Essentially, everything over 85,000 bytes will, will go there. So it's unlikely that you'll hit it just by making big, complicated objects. They tend to have to be storing some kind of data to get to that size. Is there other ways we can avoid loading the entire thing into memory once? Is that like best practice to you know, read it in, into a stream or something and get it out of memory again? Um, yeah, I guess that would be one way to do it. If you can avoid loading the whole thing at once, then it should hopefully go on the smaller object heaps and yeah, it would prevent the problem. That long compaction, is that going to be exciting for Metro apps because they get blown away if they freeze for longer than not many milliseconds? Um, what the exact number is now? Yeah, I believe it's, it's 50 milliseconds or so. Uh, yeah, I guess you probably wouldn't want to do it on a, on a Metro app then. Uh, but I guess most Metro apps are probably not going to be throwing around enough data to have this kind of problem be a major concern. Yeah. I was thinking I might, you might want to just turn it on constantly because you might say, I, I, can't, I don't want to wait until at one point and then have it take 10 seconds. I want every garbage collection for it to spend yeah. five milliseconds. <coughs> as Chris said, it doesn't, your size is proportional to heap size, not proportional to the amount you collect. Yeah, so if you've got to the point where this is likely to be a problem, so say your large object heap's got to be a couple of gigabytes, then it's going to pause for about five seconds. So, yeah, if you have to call it, then it's quite a, an inconvenience. How, how long would it take if you only have, say, five megabytes of large object heap? Like a about 10 milliseconds, but then you yeah. may as well not bother doing it at all. So well, no, that, you might as well do it all the time just to stop it having to take five seconds further down the road. That's kind of what I'm arguing. I think the point is it will always take five seconds further down the road if you've got that mistake on it because there's a gap at the, front, at the very beginning, but it'll have to be everything to fill it. Well, if there are no gaps, I think doing it will still cause the entire heap to be reallocated regardless of 
that it depends on your so supply and data size. So if most of your data is being thrown away, then that's true. But then if most if you're collecting down to five megs three, you're probably not suffering particularly bad fragmentation anyway. Are we using this code anyway? Do we do this in any of our products or was it just um, not as far as I know. Um, yeah, I don't think we use it on the profilers and that's what I work on, so yeah, ideally you shouldn't have to use it. But. Is there any way to get a handle on how much fragmentation there is? Uh, you can use Ant's memory profiler to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest with you, it doesn't give you a particularly great uh, description of exactly where the objects are and how fragmented it is. If you want really detailed information, you can dump the heaps using WinDBG and it will tell you exactly where each object is. I mean, we're just programmatically for deciding whether or not to turn this off and bring in the garbage collection. You know, if, if you've got 10 meg allocated, but it's all at the beginning of your um, heap. You know, uh, I don't believe there's any way to do it at runtime. Not that I know of, anyway. You basically have to capture that at every exception. Do it. 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 Um, I don't think there is any notification of that, no. I think what just happens is an out-of-memory exception is thrown and then your, your application dies and you can't easily catch these things because the CLR can't differentiate between a kind of benign out-of-memory exception by allocating a really big op um, object to one that has happened because you've run out of extra memory to JIT something, for example. So after that happens, it has to kind of assume that the application is fundamentally corrupt and stop.